indicate a specific time will be heard at this time. All items may be taken out of sequence to accommodate public and staff availability. Commissioner Sullivan, would you please lead us in the pledge? All right, we'll go to 3.30 timed item um, regarding public comments. Any member of the public may address the Solid Waste Management Authority on any manner on or off the agenda. But before we do that, I will, on procedural grounds, I'm removing item number 7.1 from the agenda at this time. And item 7.2, uh, will be uh, acknowledged and receipt, uh, but no discussion at this time as it is a preliminary report and incomplete. So uh, the public may uh, address and come up at this time. Anybody from the public who wishes to address may approach. Okay, state your name and your city. Thank you. Make sure your mic is on. And we get, get. Okay. Uh, excuse me, Elizabeth, one second. I know we did not do a roll call, and I guess it's implied since everybody's here, but Wilma, why don't you go ahead and do the roll call, okay. if you'll bear with us just for a sure. moment, Elizabeth. Here. 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 And here. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, procedural acknowledgement. Everyone is here. Um, go ahead. Uh, you have the floor, right. and Elizabeth, go ahead. Thank you. I'm Elizabeth Henry, and good afternoon. I've read the R3 draft report and was pleased that the first paragraph of the executive summary agreed with the majority of the public that the Del Norte Solid Waste Management Authority is the most effective and efficient entity for managing solid waste in Del Norte County. The draft report should have ended there. Instead, it recommends changes without presenting backup facts, figures, or adequate analysis. The first recommendation is to reduce staffing levels without any evaluation of actual staffing needs. Quoting from page 11 of the draft report, the rationale for decreasing staff is simply the current staffing levels of the authority are much more consistent with the staffing levels in a JPA serving much larger population bases. The Humboldt Waste Management Authority is mentioned here as an example of being most similar yet it has 38 employees. There's no similarity there. A truer statement would be that the authority's similarity to large population, JPA is, is due to the number of functions it carries out. The draft report recommends cutting back authority functions and staff to some undefined standard referred to on page 11 as, and I'm quoting, bringing them more in line with that required to effectively administer the responsibilities of the authority. There is no explanation of what bring the, bringing them more in line means. Is it suggesting that arbitrarily reducing authority function and staffing to the size and functions of other small counties' JPAs is a reasonable plan? It doesn't make sense. What does make sense but is missing from the draft report is an as-is option. Positive, positive statements about the authority scattered throughout the draft report support that. Instead, the authority is presented as an entity which has achieved its original purpose and needs to be restructured. As a large amount of money and staff time has been wasted over the years on this issue, a well-functioning agency has been crippled, an excellent executive director has been fired, and the remaining employees have suffered under stress, undue stress. We now have in front of us a 23-page draft report and a six-page job description, a total of 29 pages, the rest being copies of other work. The authority is paying well over $1,000 per page for a very flawed and incomplete and inconsistent document. I suggest the Board of Commissioners cut their losses today, negotiate with R3 for some amount of refund and return to their appropriate role as advocates for responsible solid waste disposable 
disposal and recycling in Del Norte County. And I don't say that with any glee because I supported a consultant and I was looking forward to seeing a, a good evaluation of what's going on here and including it as is uh, option and that is not included. So I don't believe this report is helpful at all. Thank you. Okay, Elizabeth, thank you very much. Any other comments? And I'm making sure the clock is on. I'm looking at it. So, uh, Wilmer, we are, oh, we are good with the clock? Okay, I'll wait for you to. All right, I've got the clock right in front of me, uh, so let's go from there, and I think at three minutes we'll, tr we'll try to do this as best we can. Uh, go ahead, identify yourself, and the clock starts now. Hi, I'm Patricia Black, and I'm a city resident and also a member of the advisory task force. So um, I understand this is a draft. I read the whole thing, and I'm glad it's a draft. I was pleased but not surprised that they recommended that the JPA was the most efficient way to deal with um, avoiding duplication of effort between the city and the county, and that they've been very effective at meeting the goals given them by the state and avoiding violations in areas of concern in the landfill and the transfer station. What I'd like to address is the concept of ultimate goals. Several times in the report, at least twice, they referred to ultimate goals as being public jobs versus private jobs. To me, the ultimate goal of the Del Norte Solid Waste Management Authority would be to reduce, reuse, recycle, and manage solid waste in a way that's the most cost effective and easy for all citizens of this county. Um, so I'd like to look at some of their suggestions in the light of what I see as being the ultimate goals. Um, it lists other JPAs and their staffing, but it does not say what those JPAs are responsible for doing, such as managing the landfill or um, dealing with the transfer station. It also doesn't say how well they do what they're doing. Maybe those JPAs with two people trying to do everything are not doing such a good job. We don't know from the report. So, and the other thing that, there's lots of things, but the other thing I wanted to hit on was the idea of moving the landfill monitor position into the county. We all know this isn't an entry level minimum wage position. This requires someone who's an expert in that matter. It's also not a full time job. At the moment, the person who does it, it does that and a wide range of other things pertaining to solid waste. If the county were to try to hire someone to do that job, how lucky, it would be very, very lucky if they found someone who's willing to relocate here for a half-time job or even a three-quarter time job. If they had to advertise a full-time job, wouldn't they have to come up with things for that person to do? And how in the long run would that save the citizens of this county money if you just shift it from one public agency to another? It doesn't make sense to me. So I'm really disappointed that this report did not, how am I doing? You're doing fine on time. And, I'm, and if I can just uh, interrupt your time just for a moment. Part of this issue with the report is it's preliminary and there were some procedural things that took place that were without the knowledge of the authority. And that's why I'm, I'm going to let everyone have their time and you get another minute. Okay. But it's, it's not our intention to discuss the R3 report, report today other than to acknowledge it. Right, so I understand that. So go ahead to Patricia, wrap up your minute and Before we're good you for think that. about it, maybe you could throw these things into your thinking pots. So uh, some of the other things that disappointed me was that they didn't actually analyze the cost savings. They said, oh, well, do this if it'll save you money. Oh, well, do that if it'll save you money. My understanding was that's what we were paying $33,000 for, was to have them figure out whether it would save money or not and who it would save money to. For example, um, their suggestion that we should contract out the educational thing to Recology is like, okay, but Recology is not going to do that for free. What are they going to charge? And will they address all the issues, for example, used motor oil, um, paint, that kinds of things that they don't collect? Will they also do the, that education? If so, 
what would they ask to be paid to do that? And Patricia, I will ask you to wrap it up. Okay, so my wrap up is that I would be delighted if you, I, I think there's a confusion as to what the ultimate goals are. And I think in order to get a report that addresses those goals, they need to know what those goals are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other speakers? Okay. Please identify yourself and your, whether you live in the city or the county. Norma Williams. I'm the chapter president of the Del Norte County Employees Association, SEIU 10 to 1, and I'm also a county uh, resident. I did review the uh, draft R3 report. I did find it um, a positive that they said that the authority was doing well as is. Uh, that the authority should be maintained. My concern was, however, in the options, especially option three, where it addressed um, the uh, transfer station gateway staff um, in relation to possibly privatizing their positions. I'm basically here to remind you that now that you do have this uh, draft report, that under MM uh, Myers Milius Brown, you are required and mandated by state law to have an immediate meet and confer with the union staff in relation to this report, since it has a potential in the possible changes in their wages, hours, and conditions of employment. Um, I'm also reminded to, I'm also here to remind you um, that the Costa Mesa case, uh, upon review with our union attorneys, does apply in this instance. And um, also to also remind you that you know, the gate staff, as well as management staff, they're very hardworking people. And as you could tell here, especially when the president was here in the past, um, they're very dedicated. They do a very good job. The report did cite that. I don't see why the reconstruct any kind of restructuring um, should, inc should endanger their jobs in any way, shape, or form. Um, but again, I'm here in support of the union staff there, as well as the management non-represented staff. And again, do remind you of your duty under law to have immediate, an immediate meet and confer with, this, with the union staff in relation to this report and the, in, and the potential impact it would have on them. To do, to do otherwise, to take action without do so, doing so, well, the union would have no other choice but to take further action. Thank you. Uh, Council, uh Bryce, uh, we, we want to make it clear that this uh, authority is not prepared to address this report at this time because it is, in fact, preliminary. So uh, are we in violation if we do not meet? We're, we're, we're going to s schedule on this agenda a second meeting uh, in approximately two weeks, and it's on this agenda today. Um, I want to make sure we're legal and, uh, and with, with, with relationship to Ms. Williams' claim. Yes, this is just a draft report. We have not seen the final report yet. Um, hopefully, the report will address some of the concerns raised by Ms. Williams when it's in its final form. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next speaker. Good, after <clears throat> Good afternoon. I'm Catherine Murray, a resident of the city and the county. And I wanted to get a point of clarification at the beginning of the meeting. It was indicated that uh, item 7.2 is incomplete, which is the draft report from R3. And on your agenda, it indicates that the asterisks uh, are um, associated attachments. So that would be 7.3 and 7.4 associated attachments for um, they are related to 7.2. That would be the um, invoices for the R3 consulting group. Those are two invoices. So I'm wondering if you're going to take those up because those are part of part. So I'm not sure if why would you want to pay those if you haven't addressed the um, draft report or the final report. Are you asking a question, or you want to finish your three minutes? Um, well, if you're if you're saying that the report is incomplete, why would you want to pay those two invoices when you haven't gotten your final product? Okay, we we will discuss that, and this is a procedural issue, and I'll defer to Council Rice at this time rather than answer you directly. So, uh, Council Rice, I think at this point, I would rather let all the speakers finish, and then we'll address the. I'll make a statement, and we'll address how we're going to move forward. So if you can hold your thought on that. And thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Ms. Murray. Any other speakers? 
Please come up, identify yourself. Eileen Cooper, Downward County, and customer. Um, I am concerned about a couple of things that I read in the paper. Um, one, being one issue that triggered the whole reevaluation is um, financial oversight um, and some mysterious um, unaccounting for a sum of money. And so why would you want to lessen the, um, the oversight of finances? Um, it appeared from the paper that that would be a result of some of the suggestion in this report. And the, um, and so that, that concerned me. The other thing is that um, that little phrase that came up in the last meeting, externalities. Um, this um, solid waste authority management um, oversees very, very thoroughly the environmental issues with regard to the closing of the transfer station. I mean, of, of the landfill when we opened the transfer station. And so, so that is something that is a huge responsibility. It's not, it's something that could um, balloon into a, a huge issue in the future with the threat of earthquakes, tsunamis. There's a lot of unknowns in managing a facility like that. And for years, both the city and the county contributed to that big massive pile and the, the issue of having to um, oversee that is important and it's, it's a dual responsibility for everybody who contributed to that problem. And so we have oversight, we have an agency that is responsible directly to the people the administration. So why would we want to privatize that part and reduce our control over making sure that is handled properly? And if Ms. Cooper, if you could okay, wrap up your comments, and that's and that's it. It's a dual responsibility, and it's not. It, it's an externality if it becomes privatized. So, thank you. Any other speakers wish to approach? Please identify yourself, name, and city or county. Both, actually. Mike Tompkins, resident of the city-owned property in the county. I'd like to read my statement. First, let me, let me say I appreciate the complexity and the seriousness of the task that you have before you today, and I'd like to honor your work. It's uh, not easy, and certainly it's not fun, I'm sure. To that end, I would offer these thoughts regarding the way forward in light of this draft report from R3. You have on record responses to this report from three people who have real and well-developed expertise in this subject, Ted Ward, Martha Rice, Rich Taylor. Having read Mr. Ward's response, I'm convinced that it is a reasoned, respectful, well-considered and re response and offered in very good faith. It's clear to me that Mr. Ward's response to the report from that report that he speaks the same language as that report. He comprehends that report fully and accurately. Mrs. Rice and Mr. Taylor also bring real expertise, experience, and good faith to their respective responses and deserve the full consideration of this board as it considers how to direct R3 to proceed. And uh, I see according to today's uh, agenda that you will be considering authorization of about $25,000 in payments to R3, I would definitely discourage full payment of their contract until they have submitted a report that fulfills the contract in a much more professional manner than this draft report demonstrates. I do recognize that it is a draft report and encourage you to send R3 back to work on it, but this time with a full and comprehensive understanding of the goals of your constituents regarding our solid waste disposal system. To that end, I would like to declare my concerns personally as a resident of both the city and the county. First, and for me foremost, is the environmentally safe 
and ecologically sound disposal of all hazardous materials. Very important. First, for me. Second, reduction of the waste stream through the vigorous, vigorous, I repeat, promotion of recycling, reducing, reusing, redirecting, and removal as as much of that waste stream as possible. Third, finding a fair and sustainable pricing formula that reflects a balanced consideration of the needs and concerns of both business owners and the private citizen. And please notice that the issue of government versus private enterprise is not in my list. For me, that is a secondary issue, one that should not in any way compromise the accomplishment of the primary concerns listed above, safe removal of hazardous waste, vigorous promotion of recycling, and fair and balanced pricing. And again, I thank you for doing this hard work. Thank you, Mr. Tompkins. Any additional speakers? Come up. Please identify yourself in city, county. My, <coughs> My name is Kevin Hendrick. I live in David Finnegan's district. You're in the county. Yes, sir. I have a point of order, I guess. I'm trying to be clear on how you have an agenda item that's listed for comments and questions and input, and yet you're not uh, asking why don't you for finish comments your three, on why that. Why don't you finish your three I'm, minutes, I, and then I'm going to ask you to explain why you have an agenda item, but you're not allowing public comments. I'll wait for that answer later. I still have three minutes. If you stop interrupting me, I'll get to my final Go point. Ahead. If you're amending it, you can amend the agenda. If it's not the action that you intended, if you're pulling it, you can pull it like you did 7.1. I've never seen this happen before. You have an agenda item, and you're telling people they're not allowed to comment on it, which is what the law requires. I will await uh, an explanation of that, but I will register my protest at this point. That seems inappropriate and highly unusual. Any additional speakers? Okay, we will close off the public section at this time, public comment section, and we will, Roger, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. My, my, I beg your pardon, uh, please identify yeah. your name. My name is Ralph Johansson. I'm a resident of the county. Uh, I've read the draft report of R3, and I've read uh, the response by the staff, and I've read uh, legal counsel Rice's memo, and I've read Richard Taylor's uh, response regarding uh, the uh, privatization of the, uh, uh, the gate function, as I understand it. The, the main thing that occurs to me right now is how many, how many members of this board have actually read this report? I don't know. I will <laughs> Okay. I read the R3 report. I, I, I'm really glad to hear that because oh, yeah. I'm beginning to wonder what the agenda is here. Why are we pursuing all this? There's no meat whatsoever to this report. You ask, you paid $33,000, or you're going to pay, I assume, for a report that to me is fluff. There's nothing here in response to the main concern expressed by this board, which is the dollars and cents that could be saved by any conceivable changes. It's not here. I, I'd, be, I'd, I'd be happy to be corrected, but I do not see it. And therefore, I have to wonder why we're going on with this. What are you going to ask next? Uh, uh, what does this do to the morale of the employees here? having this uncertainty hanging over them for a, this protracted period. Uh, aside from that, I feel that the comparative analysis that addresses, supposed to address the uh, question of restructuring, actually, uh, is, as the staff report says, and I won't elaborate on it, I hope you've read the staff report as well, it says it's apples and oranges. There's no uh, uh, trenchant analysis here for this board to rely on. Uh, their statements about the present setup 
after conducting interviews and reading historical documents and, and data supplied to them by staff. Wrap up your comments, please, yes, Mr. Chancellor. Yes, Thank you. Uh, the authority has been done a good job. They say on page one, general consensus that the authority has effectively achieved its original purpose on page three. Uh, most effective and efficient entity for managing solid waste in Del Norte County, and then they list provisos which are not supported by any projected cost savings whatsoever or any other discernible rationale that I can see. So I, I think what I want to say is I hope, I hope this board, who are only here for a limited time, uh, does not want to be seen as the ones who have effectively caused the deterioration of this authority by experiments which have no basis in, in fact or, or uh, in, in cost benefit. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And let me scan the room. Are there any other speakers under the public uh, section here before we close public comments? Okay, we will close public comments at this time. M Mr. Gitlin? Uh, chair, uh, uh, yes, Ma Mr. May I just Holly. ask a couple of questions? 7.2 being removed from our agenda, we're going to have to have some minimal addressing of the R3 report. I mean, I, I need to talk a little bit about procedures and timelines and, and practicality since we have basically a, a preliminary draft report. There should be some function in which if people that have comments to make, uh, they should funnel those comments through, through uh, the Solid Waste Management Authority to go to R3, for example, and what those timelines are going to be. You know, I'm just, next steps is something that I don't know that we can avoid this meeting. Commissioner Holly, I will address that right now, and I appreciate your comments at this time. And, and let me make a statement at this time as to why we have elected to pull this item at this time. 7.2, we were prepared to discuss, um, and I met in my pre-agenda meeting with the acting director, and we were prepared to discuss it today. I received a phone call um, the next day from the R3 consultants telling me, advising me, uh, not to, uh, this is a is forthcoming. This was totally unknown to me or any other member of the authority. Uh, I asked quizzically, what, what's going on? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not understanding. Well, apparently, without the board's uh, permission or authority, the narratives were put on on site and made for public documents, and this is a draft. And that is inappropriate. That's the board's decision, the authority's decision to put that on. Well, you can't unring the bell. So meanwhile, the R3 consultants are busy addressing new questions that have been brought to them without the board's knowledge or authority. So once the bell has been rung, then we have to have, we're going to have a second report. So that is when I, and I'll be happy to poll the, uh, the authority membership here if we wish to discuss it. It was my opinion that we'll have a meeting later this month um, on R3 and probably May, Wednesday, m March the 26th, uh, per this board, that, that's our suggested date on here. Uh, and then we will, where we fully will vet it and have this, these new additions to the report. So that is why all these comments coming in will be basically readdressed when a more complete report is, is in line. Uh, remember, the, the, the authority has been out of the loop. Um, I reminded the acting director that uh, he works for the authority and not vice versa, and it is uh, our opinion that it is inappropriate to have put this on the website for public view um, until such time as the authority approve that. So I'm going to uh, ask the, uh, the authority at this time, and we'll poll everyone uh, about um, acknowledging this and then with no further discussion or whether the authority wishes to have further discussion per your motion Mr. Holly now are you making a motion Mr. Holly? I'm not making a motion I just wanted clarification <coughs> uh, we have a preliminary draft report before us R3 is going to be be uh, renovating that draft I guess but it's going to be based on comments of both our authority and, and people that are in the community how how do we get the information to R3 to affect that draft? 
and what, are the, what is the timeline in order to do that? I know, I, I understand your intention of having a meeting later on in the month and that may or may not work, but in the meantime, should we be doing something to get information to R3? Uh, your point is taken and I will um, poll the, uh, the authority at this time to wish uh, to see if they wish to accept the uh, report as a preliminary report at this time with no additional discussion or whether it wishes to uh, continue per your wish, Mr. Holly, Commissioner Holly, to have a discussion at this time. So, uh, well, 7-1 is not the issue. We're talking about 7-2. Yes, we're talking about 7.2 at this point. So um, let's, uh, Wilma, let's, uh, we'll go through there. Mr. Gastineau, what is your, your thought on whether Chair, you, sorry yes. to interrupt. I think first we, we need a first and a second to put item 7.2 on the, back on the agenda. Okay, so this is, this is in the form of a motion then. Yes. I, I, okay. Actually, I'm gonna jump in too, because I got the same question uh, Commissioner Holly does. So the process is if this is being pulled that then these folks, other constituents, users, everyone else will have another bite at the apple because they'll bring another preliminary rough draft before the board? That is correct. Is that correct? That is correct. So there will be public input on that other preliminary draft. And that is correct in a standalone meeting. That's so correct. it won't be a final draft. We'll have a preliminary draft and then we'll, we'll go to the final. We draft. have the two bites of the apple as you, as you just mentioned, uh, Commissioner Sullivan, and that's why uh, I felt it with more um, information forthcoming which the uh, authority was, was, not, was not expecting, that these are kind of exigent circumstances, so we don't want to talk about something when the answers may be forthcoming in two weeks hence. So uh, is it your wish, uh, Commissioner Sullivan, that you wish to... Uh, uh, I'm not making a motion. I, I just like to know the process. That was my I, same question. Is I, if, I just, if we're gonna, mm -hmm. if, if, we're going to duplicate 7.2 and put it on a future meeting so folks have a bite at the apple at that point. I'm, I'm fine with that. I just was confused as to what the... So we'll have another meeting where R3 will come back with the preliminary rough draft or second preliminary rough draft before we get our final draft. Is that... That is correct. M my understanding is that this, if this is accepted as a preliminary draft, the next submittal from R3 would be a draft there would be the opportunity for the board to submit comments on the draft before receiving a final. Again, uh, Mr. Ward, these are highly unusual circumstances. I, I have to state that the authority is out of the loop when it comes to the expectation of a second draft. We weren't expecting this until it appeared on the website. So uh, let me finish with the, the rest of the commissioners to see where we stand on this before we have any further comment. So go ahead, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Gastineau. So why did we get this report in the first place? <clears throat> in speaking with the uh, principals at R3, they saw it on the website. Without our permission, this was posted on the website with its, all of its analysis. And they responded and said, well, we're going to answer these. So R3 has already begun the process and is in process of doing exactly that, answering these questions which were posed by the acting director not with the authority's permission, but by the acting director's decision. Uh, I reminded the principals at R3 that they, they answer to the board and not the acting director. He acknowledged that, but we can't unring the bell. They're halfway into the tunnel and they're already responding by having additional information prepared and that will be forthcoming, I'm going to say, within the next week to 10 days. So that is the reason that we're asking that this item be pulled. And we have not accepted it yet as a preliminary report. I'll accept a motion on that after we poll the rest of the authority members. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, you pulled it though. So unless we make a motion to put it back on the agenda, it's, it's pulled until the next agenda where people will have a, a bite at the apple at that point. And I'm fine with it. as long as the public gets some input in the process, I'm fine to wait to the next meeting to do it. But we're creating quite a bit of confusion at this point. I would say if it's pulled, let's just wait till the next meeting to, put, to review the preliminary rough draft. And again, I'm responding to Commissioner Holly's uh, query as to his idea my, of having a comment. So my, my only question mm -hmm. is, is there a procedure in which R3 can get interim comments before their mm -hmm. next draft? That, that's all I'm thinking. If, if, if the drafts that they've received, the information they've received is all they're going to act on, or do we still have an opportunity to send them questions? That, that's my question, maybe of you, Ted. 
Do, do you know what their intention I, is? Uh, Chair Gitlin has specifically said I should not have conversations with R3 without his permission. And I will correct that without the authority's permission, rather than my, me as the individual chair, but as the authority. The authority must be the ones who are making these decisions. So I'm going to allow all the commissioners to have their, their words on this, so I'm going to go to you. Uh, Commissioner Wilson. Oh. I'm respond. It's it's closed item, but I'm I'm responding to the query from. Okay, we're going to proceed with Mr. Holly's Commissioner Holly's initial request to find out if the they wish to bring it back on, and and I'm not going to make the arbitrary decision as the chair. I'm going to let the input. So go ahead, Commissioner Wilson. Um, I'm fine with uh, leaving this. Uh, um, I'm fine with leaving this off of the uh, um, having it pulled at this point in time, and then again, it will come back with more information. And it sounds as if uh, Ted, you stated that it would come back again at, um, as a draft report. So then, at that point in time, it is still that that would be the procedure for everyone to submit again all the all these things i believe mr holly it's come back as a draft so it's not coming back as a final so in two weeks it will be a draft and then i believe the procedure at that time uh commissioner holly mm -hmm. would be that they would be able to uh, submit these things and and because it, again it's not uh, completed. okay it just seems like r3 should have as much information as they can so maybe prior to the next draft maybe we can post their contact info on the website that's all that's all i'm asking yeah. for or, or really we think so, i think that th our solid waste management should be a conduit for all that information so they could be packaged up and sent to r3 that's all i'm suggesting uh council rice um item 7.2 has been been pulled from the agenda um it is my uh wish as the chair to entertain the acknowledgement of this report uh, and I don't think we can do that. If we can do that, can we can we accept ah, this? Okay. Because 7.2 is is tied to 7.3 and 7.4. So will you explain um, the you this can, is a procedural matter? You can still proceed with 7.3 and 7.4. All right. So 7.2 is now pulled from the agenda. Yes. Okay. So point of information, Mr. Chair. Then we will make uh, R3s contact info available on the, the solid waste uh, management's website so if people want to email or call them um, we can post that stuff so the, uh, the public does have the ability to to make comments on the draft at this point so that is that is correct and it is the authority's decision to do that and this board's authority to, see, to do that okay. okay so we are closed on on 7.2 now let's move on to 7.3 that we have acknowledged receipt of this as a preliminary report the discussion and authorization, possible authorization of payment claim to R3 Consulting Group. But we, we haven't gone through the uh, consent okay. calendar or any other agenda items. And again, uh, Commissioner Gaston, I'm trying to deal with these issues <coughs> while they're uh, uh, t together, and then we'll move on to the consent agenda. So 7.3 is the discussion and possible authorization of payment of claim to R3 Consulting Group for invoice 726 one in the amount of sixteen thousand nine hundred and thirty dollars do i have a motion to approve payment i'll move to approve that and a second i'll second okay the move movement uh there's a motion and a second at this time uh w any uh, board comments at this time okay then we will pull the vote wilma what will we get public okay. comment public. i'm sorry public comment my my yeah public comment please approach Mr. Chairman, members of the, of the board, uh, my name is Bill Lonsdale and I live in Crescent City and I'm here to uh, uh, recommend against paying R3 anything yet, uh, despite this very irregular procedure here. I don't even think that the board voted to pull that item uh, from the agenda. But the report itself, as several members that I've talked to have pointed out and as you've heard this morning, or this afternoon, 
is not ready for prime time. So why should we pay for it? Thank you. Any additional public comments? Yes. My name is Ralph Johansson again. I'd like to defend the acting director. Uh, at the close of the last meeting, I came up to talk with the chair and I asked him when the report was going to be available, the R3 report. And uh, he said, uh, oh, and, and would it be available to the public? That was my specific question. And he said, ask Ted Ward. So I think you've passed the option, the, uh, the uh, choice to make this report public without uh, expressing any, any objection whatsoever. And I think staff should have that on the record. Mr. Johansson, that, that issue, I appreciate what you're saying. Are you saying you approached me as the chair and yes, asked me? I did, at the last meeting. And when I called Ted Ward, I told him that I'd talked with Roger Gitlin, and he said, ask okay. Ted Ward. Uh, he knows that, he remembers that. Well, Mr. Johansson, I'm sorry to say I've, I've not met you ever until, <laughs> and if you've spoke to me, I'm, I don't know. Because we had a very cordial greeting. Okay. Between right. us I'll, I'll leave it at year. that. We have not had a conversation. So uh, having said that, I'll ask for it. And we are talking about 7.3, yeah. the payment. So that is what we're talking about at this time, 7.3. Elizabeth Henry County uh, resident. Um, I'm really confused. I never did hear that we we're going to have a preliminary of a preliminary yeah. draft. Uh, I'll just give you my reading as a public uh, person. It was very important that this information came to the public so they have time to digest it, read it, keep up with you, what you're getting, what you're, what you're reading. So the fact that somehow it was wrong that it got out in the public, I think is really a bad uh, thing to leave with the public. Uh, I, I have to say, frankly, what I think happened is that uh, R3 saw the comments and, and knew what, what a bad job they'd done. That's actually it. They've done a bad job. They want to pull it back. They want to fix it. And if this means that there's going to be retribution on any staff people, you can have a real argument with me and other people. What we're trying to do is to, to make this really an open process. If R3 wants to pull back, you know, we should know what, why they're doing it and what's happening. And so it, now what we're being told, this is really just a process that was expected to happen, and I don't believe that. So anyway, those are my comments. Any additional public comments? This is on 7.3 only payment of the invoice. I understand. Um, Norma Williams, uh, Chapter President, Dillon County Employees Association, SEIU 1021, and a county resident. Quite frankly, I'm baffled at the fact that you're even entertaining to consider 7.3 or even 7.4, considering the fact that you pulled 7.2. Um, also, the fact, as public here has acknowledged, that um, it's an incomplete report. It's a preliminary draft or a prelim, a prelim, a prelim. I have no idea anymore what kind of draft form it's in. Uh, but quite frankly, I find these proceedings irregular, highly suspicious, and any motion that you entertain or even any um, consideration of 7.3 or 7.4, I would consider illegal. I still have yet to hear any motion, second, or vote on 7.2 to begin with unless it is the chair's authority to pull it on his own. So at this particular point in time, I, for one, am deeply concerned at the irregular proceedings and, shall I say quite frankly, I think you're treading a very fine line on Ill illegality. Thank you. Additional comments on 7.3? Okay, we'll close public comments and we'll bring it back to the board for additional discussion on payment of the uh, preliminary draft uh, subject to uh, changes and additions. Actually, I made the motion and I did have a question for uh, Council Rice on this. So on, on our payments that we're making to R3, the rough draft was the preliminary thing to get a payment up front, wasn't it? Without having the contract in front of me, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure. I asked Ted if he recalled what the payment schedule was, if it was a monthly invoice or it was by benchmark. And unfortunately, we don't have that in front of us today. That would be, you know, at this point, do we have, I mean, we've got some other things on the agenda. I, I'll actually uh, pull my motion 
because uh, I'd like to find that out if we're it's a, written into the contract. I just don't have the contract in front of me. I'd like to see if if we're owed if we owe them at this point, or they got to deliver a rough draft before we make a payment. Because uh, I so I'm pulling my motion. Your point is taken, uh, Commissioner Sullivan, and then uh, Commissioner. Do you have time uh, to research this, or? I'm fine with Wilson, that. Wilson, you're fine with that. Okay, so. I'd like to, is, is it still open for discussion at this Go ahead. time? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm very sorry to the public for the confusion um, in regards to this draft. And um, uh, the way that it, it has uh, come forward and, and then today, I believe that the chair had uh, um, um, good intentions and that uh, his actions allow for more input going into the next draft and therefore that it might be something that the, everyone here has an opportunity, more of an opportunity to have a part of. So I realize it's confusing today and um, I, I, um, um, I think though that by not moving forward at this point in time, it actually gives the public more opportunity. So with that said, I just wanted to say that uh, um, uh, as far as the motion to pull, uh, I'm fine with pulling my second. Right. Thank you, Commissioner Wilson. And again, I, I apologize for some of the miscon this confusion that's coming forward. It's based on the fact that uh, the authority has been out of the loop on the presentation of this on the website. And we're trying to be as open and as transparent as possible. And I'm, I apologize for some of the uh, misunderstandings that are coming. We are reacting to a situation which was thrust upon us in a in a, in a very untimely manner. And on that basis, 7.3 will defer that to the next agenda, and I will pull 7.4 likewise uh, as the chair and put that on the next agenda. I, I'm sorry. Uh, go ahead. Mr. Gitlin, c can I ask, what have we paid them so far? It's been like 6,000? The first invoice was uh, 6,000 and a few hundred. It's like 6,125 in that okay. range. Well, I, I mean, they, they've done, I, we may not all agree with some of the conclusions, but they've done a lot of work here for the $6,000. I, I think we owe them something. See, I have, I have a little different hit on it. I appreciate R3's willingness to go back and do a second draft when they, when they found out that there was so much uh, concern over the first one. They're actually doubling their efforts to get us the kind of draft that we can really address. Commissioner Holly, are you prepared to make a motion at this time? Yeah, I, I, would, that, I mean, we're, we're going back and forth on this. Right. I, I just, Commissioner Sullivan I, pulled his motion in a second. So are you willing to, or, or do you want to make another motion? I'm thinking about it. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I would move, I, I, I think I would move at this point to pay half of the $16,930 to R3. Is that possible? Um, I, my understanding is that the auditor does not, ex, does not authorize partial payments of invoices. Okay. Um, that, that's my understanding. About seven Is that not four? true? I, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, we're, we're, these are a little unusual, the pr protocol in which we're doing it. Okay. We certainly can pay 7.4. However, that's uh, the motion. Th th that said, um, previously, just for the board's information, I had received an invoice for this um, entire amount, both the 16930 and the 806875 and um, my initial response to that invoice was that we had, at that point, we had not seen any kind of draft at all, uh -huh. and so it seemed appropriate that we would not be billed up to the point of completion of the draft, and in response, they rescinded that initial invoice and submitted these two additional invoices to replace those, so they're kind of split out. So that was an initial response, just for the board. <clears throat> then I withdraw my motion on, on 7.3. Okay, are there any other commissioners who wish to make a motion on item 7.3 or 7.4 for payment yes. to our three at this time? Go ahead. I, I will make a motion that we pay them 8,068.75 based upon the invoice they've given us under 7.4 in recognition of the work they've done, uh, the, the preliminary work they've done in anticipation of the draft. Okay, do I have a second to Commissioner Holly's motion? I'll second that. Second. Okay, we'll go back to the public at this time. You'll get another bite of the apple. The public come up and talk about 7.4. Does anybody wish to come re readdress? Elizabeth Henry, uh, just a, a question. As I remember, each portion of the report had a 
uh, number associated with it. So are you, do you know what you're paying for here? If, uh, you know, they were kind of split up because I remember ta you, we were, you talked about taking some portions out. Uh, does that make a difference? Because you may be paying for an end part of that as opposed to paying where you are right now. So it seems to me that you really know, need to know what you have in front of you before, before you make and approve that motion. Thank the, you. the board does have as an attachment to the R3 uh, invoice in its board packet as the last page of item 7.4, a breakdown of the different billings. And so you can see which tasks we're getting billed to. And so for the $8,000 and 68 cents 75, that is indicated under the March billing. That's right. Um, largely though the amounts don't match completely. Um, but you can, indica you can see there the, the various levels of efforts on the tasks. Okay, we have a motion and we have a second. Are there any additional public comments at this time regarding the payment of $8,068 and 75 cents to R3 Consulting Group? At this time, anybody, public comments? Come up. Janet Gilbert, I live in the county. Uh, I, it behooves you to read your contract and know exactly what you signed that you agreed to pay and what those payments should be and when you would be expected to pay those rather than to arbitrarily come up with a number and toss that out. You've, you've made a legal commitment to do something with this organization and you need to follow the contract that you signed regardless of tossing them a bone or paying the whole thing. And so I would suggest that if you do not have the contract in front of you that you postpone approving any payment until you can go over your contract. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional public comments? Seeing no additional public comments, I'll bring it back to the authority, the board here. Um, we have a motion and we have a second motion by Commissioner Holly, a second by uh, Commissioner Gastineau uh, to pay the amount of $8,068.75. And, um, and I'll bring it to the board for discussion. Hey, you know, I'm going to move the table. We don't, I agree with Ms. Gilbert. We don't have a contract in front of us. We, we don't know what the, what we're paying for in regards to the contract. I, I would move the table until the next meeting. Well, we have an active motion right now, so... So my motion is going to take precedence over it's that It's a substitute motion. motion. Substitute okay. Motion. Substitute motion to table. Do we have a second to table uh, Commissioner Sullivan's uh, motion at this time? Oddly, yes. I'll second. Okay. <laughs> second. All right. So... I just want to be in the notes somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I just want to be... <laughs> This is quite a journey we're on today. All right, so let's um, go back to the public for regarding, regarding the table. Um, anybody wish to make a comment on? I don't the, think there's discussion. It's been okay. moved to table. Okay. So. Uh, Wilma, let's pull the vote about tabling um, this uh, payment of eight thousand sixty-eight dollars and seventy-five cents. <laughs> yes. 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 Okay, so both are Transparent. All right, so those matters having put aside, let's go back to the genesis of the meeting. And I, I wanted to put this in the beginning of the meeting because there are people who have time constraints who wanted to be at this meeting and to hear it before they had to leave. And that's why we put the just to this meeting in the beginning rather than where it would be on the agenda. So, uh, Mr. Chair, if I could just, uh, this is just a point of information for me on, you pulled item 7.1, could I get the reason why it's being pulled? The 7.1 uh, regarding development, implementation, and monitoring of additional fiscal controls of addressing regular practices of the Del Norte Solid Waste Management Authority. I pulled this because number one, we do not have a final report from the Sheriff's Department. That's number one. Secondly, uh, there is um, there's information in here which uh, I believe needs to be fully vetted as to its authenticity and the analysis is, um, an, is, has been presented without the board's uh, knowledge and uh, that is why I pulled it for further discussion and at this time. So uh, if the uh, authority wishes to discuss 7.1, 
uh, asked no, you I, about. I, I, no, I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I, I think it, it is important because it, the we want to make sure what's in there is factual, and I don't believe it is factual right now. So and the, the, thank you for pulling that. Yes, and the acknowledgement of doing this is that in many cases the authority has been out of the loop in terms of uh, what is and what is going on the website and the authority will in the future will be playing more active role in the analysis and the interpretations thereof so before this goes to print and before it sees the public's eyes uh, this board will see it first okay let's move on with uh, matters of the meeting and uh, we'll go to uh, item number one Delnut solid waste task force uh, we have no items to report uh, uh, acting uh, Director Ward, anything to report from the so Solid Waste Task Force? Not that I'm aware. Okay. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Okay. 7.3 and 7.4 have been dealt with, and we're not. We 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 they've been. It's it's tabled. Yeah. Well. Okay. Until the next meeting. All right. Okay. Let's do this the right way. Commissioner uh, Sullivan, did you? The action on 7.3 uh, has. Um, One, two, three, and four. Will you entertain and make your motion to include uh, items 7.3 and 7.4? Sure, I'll, um, I'll amend my motion to move to table both 7.3 and 7.4 to the next meeting. And can the second on, uh, I believe the second was from Commissioner Holly? Yeah, you did. Yes. Okay. And I think we polled, so let's uh, go. And, and poll this again and do a well we'll do the vote again for item 7.3 and 7.4 yes 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 all right let's move on to the consent agenda approved minutes regular session Tuesday February 11 2014 um, Acknowledge and file applications to Cal Recycle 2.2 and 2.3. Do I have a motion to approve? Uh, okay, we have a motion approved by Commissioner Sullivan. And do I have a second? I'll second the motion. And seconded by Commissioner Holly. Public discussion, please, on uh, items 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3 consent agenda. No public comments. Bring it back to the board. Any comments from uh, the board? Let's see. So you're not going to 2.9 at this point? Under uh, consent two agenda? 2. What is it? Your the number? So, Commissioner Wilson? So under the consent agenda 2.9, you're not addressing that? Um, I'm looking. No, 2.1 two, one, two, one to 2.2 two, two is the consent two, agenda. 2.1 to 2.2. Two, two, oh, okay. 2.3. Two, three. Three. And 2.3. Two, three. Yeah, two, and consent two, agenda. Two, I don't have a 2.9 yeah. on my agenda. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. All right, so Wilma, let's uh, pull the vote on the consent agenda. This is approval. Yes. 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 Okay, then we'll move on now to the director and treasurer's report, and we'll move on to 3.1 acting director's report. Um, go ahead, uh, Mr. Ward. Okay, just highlighting those items that aren't going to be discussed elsewhere on the agenda. Uh, I did send a draft of the Pledge of Revenue Agreement to both the City Council and the County Board of Supervisors. I was informed by the City Manager that the City did not uh, believe that they had a need to review or adopt this pledge, and be, as they had not done so in the past. And so I did remove the signature lines for the City and forwarded a revised version to the County Council. Uh, and. To my awareness, this has not been presented to the Board of Supervisors yet at this time. I did complete the stormwater inspections at both the Crescent City Landfill and Del Norte County Transfer Station. I've attended uh, planning meetings for the Youth and Family Fair, in which we're partnering with Recology Del Norte to promote recycling uh, in the what I generally refer to as the Fuchsia Room, uh, adjacent to the main uh, room in at the fairgrounds. Uh, we did install a di an additional surveillance camera in the scale house at the Del Norte County Transfer Station. And on the 1st of March, unfortunately, the main computer at the scale house did uh, give up the ghost. And so I spent the better part of a weekend working with Sean Slater to try to uh, replace that computer and uh, the systems are now back up and running and functional. 
uh, on, and I did also do the collection of the home generated sharps that we uh, collect through the community health center. Uh, in terms of compliance, uh, we did receive the first groundwater contours at the landfill for the new investigation wells, and I plan on bringing that item for further discussion to the April meeting. Uh, upcoming, uh, we do have a draft budget that uh, will be developed and presented to the board, uh, hopefully at a meeting towards the end of this month. Uh, during this month, we also need to collect surface water samples and stormwater inspections at both the Crescent City Landfill and the Delmark County Transfer Station. Uh, I uh, am presuming that a good portion of my time will be taken up uh, responding to the draft report as soon as I see that from R3. We also have a responsibility to do the quarterly gas monitoring at the Crescent City Landfill. And there, we are trying to uh, obtain permits to install additional fencing adjacent to the Household Hazardous Waste Building to facilitate the uh, dramatically expanded receipt of paint and storage of paint at the Delmar County Transfer Station under the partnership between Hambro and Paint Care. Uh, there are additional items, uh, but it's all in the report for you there. Okay, uh, comments back to the board on uh, the acting director's report. Uh, no, but I did call the sheriff's office to ask where the report was uh, um, that was submitted by Detective Barber uh, again. Um, so hoping to receive that uh, uh, report to the authorities soon. And I don't know, I'm thinking about doing that a little bit more often until we get that report. I don't know what's ho holding that up. I also have uh, submitted phone calls and emails and I have not received any response. Hmm. Though actually, I did receive a report uh, that we may be discussing in future. There have been a number of alarm calls at the transfer station, so that was the report I received from the sheriff. Any then, addition? Or, and then, as ahead. far as the you know finances and the audits, again, you know, I um, gosh, I go back to my records on our our um, accounts receivable being at the hundred and thirty-eight thousand uh, dollars since uh, October. And I absolutely share that concern, and unfortunately, as the board is aware, Isabel Valdez, our administrative assistant, is out on medical leave, and as soon as she returns, we will be following up on that. But she has been engaging with uh, the auditor's office, and I believe we've made some progress on that, but it is not reflected in this report. So again, in getting back to the finances, uh, um, this is the same drum I beat every time, is that... Uh, you know, as a, as a uh, board member here, um, I am not, uh, we get them late. Um, um, I have to take the, the former month uh, um, to you know, put into the previous month. And um, uh, still, it is not a process that allows for us to have good oversight of the finances for this body. It's, uh, again, um, uh, and then um, I had a, a huge question on the back of the uh, balance sheet for January 31st. Um, there's an item in here for security that shows a deficit. It's got parentheses around it of $169,000. That, that was a keying entry that was entered in the wrong place. So the reason why it's backed out there, then that's why it's negative, is that it should not have been placed in that line. Um, and where it actually was, I, I would have to investigate, but that's the reason why it's negative. It was, it was inappropriately entered. So again, um, yeah, I, I don't understand a system that would uh, show that. So then do you mean to tell me last month that it was a positive $169,000? I believe that is an entry error. I don't believe that is an accurate reflection of either an expense or a payment on that budget line. I believe it's, it's, it's backing out an incorrect entry. Okay. It, it's, again, very, very difficult to follow. It looks like we had 19 uh, um, checks this month. Um, and as far as... So I guess the obvious question, since you're asking that, is how did we get $169,000 error put in the system? Was that done on the authority's part, or was that done at the auditor's office, or where was the error? Where did the error occur? 
Well, it's a good question, and I, I plan on investigating it. I don't have an answer immediately for you. Uh, but as I've mentioned, uh, Isabel Valdez, our administrative assistant, who is the key person to deal with these issues, is out on medical leave. And so there's a number of financial questions that at this point we are understaffed to address. All right, Ted, can you come back and give us an explanation at the next meeting Absolutely. regarding this uh, $169,000 entry? Right. Or, yes, uh, Clinton Shad, Auditor Controller, you'd like to use this on? Mm -hmm. okay, regarding that uh, $169,000, if I remember correctly, I can't tell you if it was a king error in my office or when the claim came over had the wrong number on it. But that was a Hambro payment that got put in the wrong line item, and it has been corrected since this report. Right? Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, 2036 security. They're taking mm -hmm. it out of that because it got in the wrong place. And it should be 20239. 20239. So somebody got a six. So it's a, it's a typo error. error. Without pulling the claim, I can't tell you if it came over that way from solid waste or if my staff hit a six instead of a nine. It has been caught and has been corrected. And that's the other thing. I did not see a payment to Hambro's on, so that was the deal. Yes. Yep. Yeah, so I, because I tried to plug it I, into my form here, the, my little handy dandy form. I, I do need no to point out, though, why Mr. Shad's up, and, and uh, it, it is Mr. Shad's office that did find the, the it was, what is the dollar amount? Because the, the dollar amount's been misconstrued several times, uh, the missing money. In terms of uh, what your office discovered, the number that I've been using is thirty thousand dollars. It's thirty thousand rounded. It's twenty nine thousand. It's a little over twenty nine thousand. Yeah. Okay, so that I mean, I got to congratulate your office on finding it because we went a long time with missing money floating out there, and we're still waiting for the the report to come back. But I, your office did a great job on that. So thank you. So does that answer your question as far as the one sixty nine? Yeah, so, I don't, so then we did not get updated forms here, so because it doesn't all, it, again, it, it has been corrected. Um, I believe Ted emailed me. Um, we took care of that. That was either a keying error, I can't tell you if it was my office part or if it came over that way. Regardless, we should have caught that. Um, so hit a six instead of a nine. All right, is this board uh, satisfied with the, uh, the level of the $169,000 answer with regard to it's been inappropriately entered as a wrong number? Okay. All right, so let's um, move on now to uh, 3.2 Treasurer Controller's Report for January 2014. And uh, is it Mr. Taylor, are you going to come up and give us uh, that report at this time? Thank you. The, uh, I guess to answer that, I, real quick, I'll show you guys. See where this 169 came out? It went right down here to 20239. All right, we've got to be careful because we want to make, make sure we're making disclosures. So go ahead and report what you're, you're, you're showing to Commissioner Wilson and get it on the record. This is being viewed on television. So okay. go ahead, uh, Mr. Taylor. Well, um, basically, there's a transition. And this is part of your Treasurer Controller's report. Well, just because it came up. Um, 20236 is security. There's a minus 169,000. 20239. The only thing that could be 169,000 would be yeah, transfer right. station operations. So it's pretty easy to see that they took it out of security and they put it in transfer station operations because it's twice as much as it should be. So, and it was, it was a transposition error. When you're hitting those things, you hit six or you hit nine. And I don't know who did it, but it's okay. pretty easy to see. Uh, the rest of it is- Cleared it. Now the rest of your report? Well, for the month of January, there's uh, on a modified cash basis, we had a, almost a $37,000 profit and for the seven months so far, we have $125,000 profit. We have uh, $464,335.59 in the bank. We have a deposit that held 17 cents. I don't really know what all you want in a, it's all, it's all in the financial statement. Can you repeat that one more time, please? Uh, which one? The cash and the- The cash uh, is on the, in the assets. And it's cash solid waste. It's four hundred sixty-four thousand three hundred thirty-five dollars and fifty-nine cents, according to the auditor's office, which I found that they're right on those things. And then we have an iBank loan deposit held by the county of one hundred ninety-eight thousand one hundred seventy-seven dollars and seventeen cents, and that's to make our last payment on the sublease payable. Okay, that that concludes your report. Yeah. Three point two. Now stay with us, uh, Mr. Taylor. You have claims approved by treasurer and director for February 2014. Okay. Um, they total $152,000, of which $138,071.05 is Hambro. Okay. 
And I didn't see it on, on my list of claims approved by director. I don't see Hambro's on here again. Uh, on three it's point the three. fifth line from the bottom, 138,071. Oh, there it is. Okay. Excuse me. Anything okay. else? No. Are you, you're complete with your SO 3.3. So we're moving on now to 3.4, monthly cash and charge reports for February 2014. Mr. Ward. Um, well, the reports are there, uh, as per usual. Uh, generally, February is a slow month compared to other months, and that certainly was borne out. Uh, probably a, a better assessment about how we're doing is under item 3.5, and that uh, compares our projections uh, for authority service fees and for franchise fees for month by month. And you can see that uh, for February, we're below average, but um, very similar to what we were, and in fact, a little bit ahead of where we were February last year. And uh, that we're a little bit behind in terms of our projections for the franchise fees for that same month, but um, pretty close to projections. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ward. Then we'll move on the ND directors and treasurers reports. We'll move on item number four, landfill post closure, no items to discuss. Correct. Okay, so we'll move on to collections, collections franchise, discussion possible action under 5.1 regarding letter of February 27, 2014 from Recology Del Norte requesting rate adjustments based on changes to the consumer price index to become effective July 1st, 2014. This is a standard part of our agreement. Part of the cost controls that we have to make sure that the, the rates are, uh, do not have excessive jumps that might shock our rate payers. Uh, we do have uh, cost controls so that the, both the Recology Del Norte collections contract and the Hambro Waste Solutions Group uh, transfer station operations contract have automatic price adjustments based on changes to the consumer price index. And they are not, so essentially the consumer price index is a generally used uh, measure of inflation and both of them have a percentage of that inflation. So the rates will be adjusted, they will increase, but they won't increase as much as inflation does. And so, uh, but it is a standard procedure that they are uh, asked to submit a request for this rate adjustment annually, 120 days before it becomes effective. And so the typical action is to receive and direct staff to start preparing the change orders necessary to implement these changes per our agreement. Move to approve. Second. On the motion to approve. Is there a second? second. Okay, I'm oh. sorry. No, I'm asking, to, I'm asking for a second. I'll, I'll do it if the other commissioners are not. Uh, I, I'd be glad to second. Okay, we have a movement and a second. And I'll open up public comments. Mr. Lonsdale? I need to be more clear. I'm giving that to the other commissioners. In the absence of that, I would have seconded that, yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Bill Lonsdale again. Uh, this is on both of the requests, Hambro and Recology. I want to start by saying I dearly love Mr. Sparrow, and I think Recology does a fine job, better than any place I've ever lived. Uh, I'm a little concerned about uh, rate increases, however, and I think it, one or more commissioner may share that. And, but I want to inquire of either Mr. Ward or of Council, what is the procedure for notifying the public of these rate increases? What is the procedure and timeline for public response? Thank you. Okay, any additional public comments? Okay, seeing no public comments, and we have a motion uh, by Commissioner Sullivan, a second by Commissioner Holly, and we'll bring it back to the board for discussion on 5.1, collections franchise discussion action regarding February 27th. Recology of Del Norte requesting rate adjustments based on changes to the consumer price index effective July 1st, 2014. Commissioners? I have a couple questions. Um, um, I received, we received this letter from Recology and it, uh, um, you had in here that all required quarterly reports have been provided. I was curious what uh, quarterly reports had been provided and the second thing is, uh, um, again, um, I, uh, 
I'm not too keen on automatic price adjustments. And uh, um, I, I know, I don't know, know that it's good to get into a, just an automatic habit. Um, I don't know if, if that's called for exactly in the contract. If, you know, if we don't have a choice, uh, I don't know how much the um, um, consumer price index has, has risen. All I know is that my business, I don't automatically go up every single year, and so I am just curious. I, I think that, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, that it seems as if it's just put forward for an automatic to-do. Um, you know, is it in the contract? Is it is this something we have to do? Yeah, it's built into the contract. So then why are we even approving it? It's a more of a rubber stamp, I think. It's an acknowledgment, to my understanding. So uh, this is the way it's been done. Now, the authority can, can examine that again if you want to revisit that, if you wish to do that. I don't know if this is the time to do that. It might be an agenda item, but that's the protocol. Um, automatic price increases. So, Council Rice. And that's in the contract? Yeah. I can address yeah. that. Go ahead, um, Council Rice. The automatic annual price um, adjustment is called for in the contract. It's based on CPI. The CPI is not available yet. The one we'd be using is mid-month this month. Um, but it is, if, if the contractors choose to use that clause in the contract to increase the rate. They must notify us ahead of time. That's what they're doing by these letters. Then when the, um, when the CPI comes out, um, I think Mr. Ward, I'm well, not sure if It'll probably be May. The, what the CPI index that we've been using has been for March. I've looked on the websites at this point. Only the CPI index for January is available. So the final CPI will uh, be available later. So then the rates will be calculated as to what the new rate would be, and I believe it's brought back to this board for a resolution. So it's automatic, but because we don't know the percentage, it has to come before the board, is that what you're saying? Right, coming, coming to us this early is so that, um, you know, giving us basically warning, time to prepare, that they're requesting this. When it comes out, we can start acting on it. And I believe the rates go into effect July 1st of the new fiscal year. But again, you would just automatically, you know, request every year. I mean, why not? I, I, so there I have been years in the past where the CPI was not requested. There yeah, have there been? was no CPI a couple years ago. Or if there's no happened. CPI or negative CPI, then those years you don't. It goes down? It doesn't go down, but oh. they, there's no increase. So it's in the, okay. So then my secondary question um, was again requiring the, um, the required quarterly reports. I was just curious what quarterly reports um, are provided. I, I'd be happy to detail those. They are fairly detailed reports mm -hmm. um, and there are a number of them. Everything from uh, tonnage collected uh, through the re various recycling programs to um, route reports. Uh, to the listing of the franchise customers. There's a, a variety of them, but they are detailed in the contracts, and if uh, you would like me to review them for the, the board's uh, benefit, I'd be happy to do that. Commissioners? Any additional comments? Okay, we'll move no, on. I guess, I guess yep. Mary, you did have one more question, though, was on notification to the consumers as to the rate increase. Is that, uh, did we answer that? I didn't. I haven't heard the answer. Is there is there something that comes in the bill, Ted, that uh, that says you're going to have an in increase in the rates? Tommy's uh, indicated this, that Recology does mm -hmm. put something in the billing to notify. Right. Mr. Customers. Sparrow, would you address that for us, if you would? Thank you. Yeah, there's a letter sent to every customer. For the record, Tommy Sparrow Recology. Tommy Sparrow Recology. There's a letter that's sent to every customer. I think it's 30 days. It's in the contract 21 days prior to the actual increase. And we send it as soon as we know what that increase is. So everybody gets a letter. So it comes in the mail. It comes, it comes in. Comes with your with your statement in the and mail. And it will be on our website. And it should be on your website. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Tommy. Okay, that's clarity. So uh, let's move on and take uh, action on this uh, motion uh, and second a motion by Sull uh, Commissioner Sullivan, seconded by Commissioner Holly. Five point one, Wilma. Yes. 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 Okay. 
All right, we'll move on to 6.1 now. Discussion, possible action regarding letter of February 28, 2014 from Hambro WSG requesting service fee adjustments based on changes to the consumer price index effective Move to approve. July 1st. Motion by uh, Commissioner Sullivan to approve. Second, do we have a second? Is that you, Mr. Holly? Will you? Second. Second by Commissioner Gassineau. Public comments, please. No public comments. We'll bring it back to the board. Any additional comments? Wilma, please poll the vote. Yes. 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 6.2 discussion possible action regarding sending a letter from Authority Legal Counsel Martha Rice to American Refuse, congratulating them on being awarded the contract for solid waste collection at Pelican Bay State Prison, and informing um, them that the requirement to deliver solid waste collected within Delnor County to the Delnor County Transfer Station per the authority's flow control ordinance. Uh, let me go to you, uh, Council Rice, for a discussion on this. Well, the letters included with your packet, um, I believe the authority was recently notified um, that a new company other than Recology had been awarded the contract to haul solid waste from Pelican Bay State Prison. Um, I'm not aware whether American Refuge is, um, I, I'm not sure that they're aware that of their responsibility to deliver solid waste from the prison to the Del Norte County Transfer Station and therefore that's the purpose of this letter is to inform them of that responsibility. Move to approve. Okay, and do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, uh, Commissioner Sullivan, a uh, motion. Uh, Commissioner Wilson, second. We'll bring it to the public's attention. Anyone from the public wish to address item 6.2? Clarity? Uh, that is a motion to approve and send? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, bring it back to the board for discussion. Do, um, were they called? Was there a phone call made? No. No? So um, I'll, the only thing I would say is that it, uh, um, it's good to have a, a lever, letter to cover, but uh, um, um, it would be nice as a business to receive a call as well as opposed to a letter right away from an attorney. <laughs> I'd be happy to call them uh, on the day we send the letter so that they get the call first and then they'd see the letter following. Yeah, because you'll be establishing a relationship with them, and they'll be customers, and so it would certainly be nice to um, to make a personal phone call, so um, that uh, again, you know, hopefully there's hopefully they're already aware of it um, before they put their bid in. But I would hope that uh, um, um, you could call. Uh, my question to Council Rice on this is: this uh, this company is out of Wasco. Um, do we have any information on, uh, is it just our uh, waste site or, or is this something that's statewide, uh, quite a uh, ways away? Um, what's been the plan? Uh, do you have any communication from them whatsoever to any knowledge of what their plan is? I'll, I'll either ask you or ask Mr. Ward for a clarification on this company. I don't know what their plans are for hauling solid waste and I don't know if they have any other operations in the vicinity. I don't know. Mr. Ward, Ward is aware. Uh, the information that I have, largely from Mr. Sparrow, was that um, American Waste has had bid on several of these agreements statewide, servicing various prisons, and uh, they were awarded many of them. And so, on that basis, it's uh, relatively unlikely that they're aware of our local requirements. Okay, so let's bring it back to the board at this time. Wilma, let's uh, pull the vote on sending the letter to American Refuse of uh, Wasco, California, advising them uh, to you that they, this company must use the transfer station to move its, uh, its trash and uh, solid waste. So I'll uh, ask Wilma to pull the vote. Can, can we amend the motion to make the call or does that need to be, essentially, I don't know. I'll, I'll defer to, com, uh, to Commissioner Sullivan. Do you wish to amend? No, no, we could just give directions. Uh, That's to fine, the okay, no problem. Call, so I don't think that, or for Ted to make the call. Okay. All right, let's pull the vote. Yes. 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 
Yes. Okay, we are dispensed and we've already gone through 7.1, 7 7.2, 7.3, and 7.4, so let's go up to 7.5, discussion, possible action regarding reintroducing and waiving the first reading of the authority ordinance regarding flow control and franchises. And uh, Council Rice, I'm going to defer to you as to the necessity of this since we've already gone th through this motion and passed it. So you wish to have it redone? Yes. Um, authority Ordinance 2014-02 is basically a replacement ordinance for the responsibility ordinance that the board um, has begun the process of repeal. The first draft at the um, at this ordinance was not reviewed by Mr. Ward and, or really anybody else other than myself. Um, after we brought it to the first meeting, um, Mr. Ward and I had a few discussions. Um, one to make sure that it was it was strong in the areas of flow control and franchise. Um, enforcement um, and found the original draft lacking in some of those areas. So we worked together to improve it and um, that's what you have before you today. Uh, included in your packet I believe is both the clean version of 2014-02 as well as a version showing you what changes we made. Okay, I'll bring it up to the public's attention on 7.5, action regarding reintroducing and waiving the first reading of authority ordinance. Uh, public, uh, this is your opportunity to approach. Come on. Thank you, Elizabeth Henry, again. Um, I have a real concern that by not including in this new ordinance the responsibility section of the old ordinance, uh, you're taking a big step backward. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of AB 341. Uh, uh, that's uh, billed by Chesbro, and I believe it became law on July 1, 2012, and there's been other previous legislation that all speaks to mandatory commercial recycling, which is now a reality. Uh, it includes in it very much the same language you have in that responsibility ordinance. It speaks to multi-unit dwellings, which uh, if they number more than five, or five or more, or uh, commercial entities that produce four cubic yards or more of waste must recycle. You have that language in the ordinance. You need to respond to AB 341. You can't ignore a state law which is setting up requirements uh, I haven't followed this closely, but I believe there is a review period coming up in August. They've allowed a little laxity because it is a major program, as you can imagine, needs a lot of education. But uh, at some point, there are going to be fines, and there's going to be, you know, the fist coming down from the state. So I just don't see the logic of gutting an ordinance only to rewrite it to be able to enforce what you're going to be asked to do under AB 341. So I'd really like to ask you to pull this item and maybe with a, a legal counsel and, and the interim director and uh, maybe a committee of the board uh, to look at this and see what are you doing and is this really a good step? Um, so. That's my primary concern, that I have not heard any discussion about mandatory commercial recycling, and it is a reality. Other areas have started their education, uh, you know, setting up whatever is needed, and uh, it's not uh, happening here. Probably, I know some things have happened, but there's been an interest in a lot of other areas. So I would really ask for your attention to that. I think it's early to pass an ordinance of this kind. Thank you. Additional public comments? Seeing none, we'll close public comments and we'll bring it back to the board for discussion and motion to reintroduce ordinance of the Board of Commissioners of the Dollar Solid Waste Management Authority regarding flow control and franchises number 2014-02. Um, so I do have a question though. If, if AB 341 is state law, why do we need a local ordinance because it's already state law? I mean, there's a duplication there. Why would you need the local ordinance? 
I mean, that, that doesn't make any sense to me. The, state law, it's state law. Then there's no need for local ordinance uh, to begin with. There is a requirement that as part of our annual reporting process that we did submit a plan for implementing the commercial recycling mandate, and that is part of our documents that we adhere to. Absolutely, but that, doesn't, that still doesn't counteract what I just said. If it's state law, it's state law. Why do you need a local ordinance if it's already Be state law? Because we are required to do that. We're required to enforce it or we're required to have a local we're, ordinance? We're required to establish a local program to implement the commercial recycling mandate. Okay, but that doesn't require you have a local ordinance. You can have a local program and not have a local ordinance in the process. It's state law, it's state law. So I'll make a motion to, to, uh, to move this ordinance. Or okay, Commissioner, ordinance. Uh, it, it, as, it, as it reads at this time, yeah. um, this action regarding reintroducing and waiving the first reading of ordinance number 2014-02 regarding flow control and franchises. The motion is by Commissioner Sullivan. Do I have a second for that? Second. Second by Commissioner Wilson. And we will have any additional comments at this time. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Public comments or? No, I think we've gone to the public on this. So let's go to you, Commissioner Holly. Thank you. Um, I'm concerned. I appreciate your comments. Um, I, I'm, I'm concerned that, that we may be doing something that's encumbering both the city and the county. I don't think that the state could go after the, the JPA, uh, but I, I don't know what the liability will be for the city and county. So I would be in favor of actually postponing this until we look at this more carefully. I, I, that said, I do appreciate the rewording of, of 2014-02 much better than the first one, and I fully intended to, uh, to approve it tonight. But I think if this uh, motion goes forward, I, I, think, uh, I think I may be voting against it only because I think more discussion is warranted. Acknowledged, Commissioner Ali. Any other additional comments from commissioners? I believe that our, our staffs on the city and county are also looking at this ordinance to see what kind of compliance it has and any duplication. So, I mean, I, I can go for some more dis discussion on it also. Okay, then uh, what we'll do at this time is, any other commissioners have anything to say? At this point, we'll, we'll ask for the vote on Commissioner uh, Sullivan's motion, seconded by Commissioner uh, Wilson on 7.5, reintroducing and waiving the first uh, reading of 2014-02. Wilma? Can I get a clarification that you did move to do this? Yeah, to adopt it. Okay. No. Hmm. Can you skip me? Skip me for a second. I'm thinking. Commissioner Hall. No. Commissioner Sullivan? Yes. Um, yes, I'm going to go ahead with this. We've already approved it at a, a previous time with minor changes. I'm going to vote yes on it uh, because we've, this is, we've gone through this before and we've taken the vote on it. And this information um, has just been brought to our attention. I'm not sure on 341 the validity of it, though, at this point. But I'm prepared to move forward uh, with this and vote yes. Now, uh, where do we stand on this, uh, Council uh, Rice, with we have two city people who have voted uh, in the negative. A motion fails. Okay, so the motion fails at this time. So um, let's uh, discuss the remedy to this, um, and I want to ask the city on this, what is it you're, you're asking uh, clarification on so that we can move, move this uh, forward? At this point, we have three past uh, ordinances uh, to pull them off, and then the flow control right now is is sitting um, in limbo because we we passed this and then we've already passed once no 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 we it's the other ones that's been passed I mean, okay it goes forward it's just we were voting on the re the rewriting of the ordinance the way it is <clears throat> so the the other ordinance we already voted on and approved the other ordinance is the three yeah there was three but 2014 was voted on once and this was a rewrite 2014-02 yeah. was and this was a rewrite and we have now a change of heart is what the commissioners are telling us we don't have two city people on board so it fails 
that's yeah. my understanding. And so, you, so your question to the city is, is mm -hmm. what more do we want done? I think it's already been stated. We need to take another look at AB 341 and the implications and ramifications of removing or changing or, or not including this in the, in the flow chart that's currently being presented. Uh, for the discussion, um, I, I strongly recommend that the board not move forward with Ordinance 2014-01, which is rescinding the 2008-01, 2008-02, 2008-03, and 2009-01 without having some ordinance reestablishing flow control and enforcement of the franchise. The possibility of rescinding those and having a gap in our flow control ordinance undermines many aspects of the authority's operations and I strongly recommend not going down that path. I think it's fine to have these ordinances go parallel so that but to, so you all understand the process as I understand it, and please, if I'm incorrect, uh, council, please correct me. But uh, once it, the first reading is waived and it's adopted by this board, then it goes separately to the city and the county for their approval, and then it comes back for final adoption here. And until it comes back for final adoption, nothing's final. And so this, while this board has taken action to rescind those other ordinances, that was just the first hear reading and it has not yet gone and been approved by the City Council and the County Board of Supervisors is my, my Do, understanding. Doesn't the other one that has not been edited, that one was voted on and went forward. So that's the one that's standing at this point in time, correct? And that one established flow control. So that one is still out there. So this was the one that changed uh, um, we, just for a point of order here, at the last meeting we voted the last two items on the agenda, 7.6 and 7.5, we voted to repeal the other ordinances and we passed 2014-01 to repeal them and then we passed 2014-02, which is this same ordinance. Right, it's already been passed. It's, it's already been passed by this board with one city vote. And now we're in a situation of do we want to pass the rewritten version of it but it's already been passed as of last meeting. Yes. So this, that's the only thing is, is the rewording as, as Council Rice has suggested is that didn't pass today, but the ordinance is already out there. That's my clear, so I wanna make that very clear that 2014-01 has passed on a four to one vote and that is intact. And 2014-02. This one, it's tw already passed. 2014. But none of these have been approved by either the Board of Supervisors no, no, or that the is city, correct. No. so it's a moot point at this point. They, if for clarification, they've both been introduced. introduced. There's two readings. There's an introduction and an adoption. They've both been introduced by this to this board. Um, they have not gone before the city and the county as of yet. Um, they have to be approved as to form by the city and the county, and then they'll come back for adoption. Right. And yes, what uh, Commissioner Sullivan is saying is true. Currently, we have. Ordinance number 2014-01, the rescinding ordinance has been introduced and 2014-02 um, in its original form has been introduced. So now they have to go to both boards at this point. All right, so yes. Council Rice, uh, based on this, this measure failing today, 2014-02, uh, I wanna just review to the public and get clarification that we have a flow control ordinance intact and voted upon by four to one vote at the last rescinded ordinances that have also been passed by this board and have yet to go, all four have yet to go to the uh, Delnor County Supervisors or the City Council. Is that, is that where we stand on this right now? Yes, there, the two ordinances as originally introduced at the last meeting have been introduced. There are pending being uh, brought to the City so Council. Only the rewritten ordinance that was your suggestion as legal counsel uh, has, uh, has, has failed because we don't have two city votes. Yes, I but be clear I, on that. Yes, but I'd like to say that I think um, I would not recommend passing the original ordinance as is because I think it can be improved upon substantially as is presented today. Um, one of your options would be um, you could direct staff at this point to bring back information on AB 341 to the next meeting and not, um, and to basically um, 
hold off on presenting those ordinances to the city council and the board of supervisors until um, this board is satisfied that the requirements of AB 341 will be met by either this this board or the city and the county. Um, as that sounded like what I was getting from Commissioner Hawley. And yeah, Commissioner all, I, all I'm asking is that we take a little bit of time and make sure that we're not getting ourselves into trouble. Um, as, as mayor, I don't intend to put this on our agenda until we have a flow control uh, ordinance that that at least meets Meets what you've standard. done here meets, meets the standard. I'm just, I'm just thinking. I, I don't want to be. There's no emergency in adopting these ordinances, and, and we could go forward without any risk. I, I'm just being cautious. Okay. And your point is well taken, Commissioner Holly. I just want to know and get a status of where we stand at this point. Uh, we do have a, a past rescission ordinance, and we do have a 2014-01 which is also passed, but the rewritten form, which you are recommending, has failed. Yes. Okay, so that's, that's, we have clarity on that. At this point, um, I'm, I will direct uh, our, uh, our staff to uh, bring this up at our next meeting, April the 8th. So you're going to re-reintroduce. And re-reintroduce, and, and, and then at this time, at the same time, I will ask no, for the <laughs> AB 341 uh, law to be brought here so that we can review it and get it in the uh, city's hands uh, so you have clarification. Well, yeah, I'm, I, excuse me, I'm pretty um, familiar with the AB uh, 341. I've read through the original state law and, and um, so I'm, I'm comfortable with what that says uh, in these ordinances. Uh, however, is there anything else, Commissioner Holly, at that point in time? I know last time, you know, when we talked about this, um, uh, you know, it, it was a little bit more than really just the ordinances. It was mm -hmm. a little bit about, you know, what uh, your feeling was uh, for the um, function of this this body, and and it wasn't so much in the details because we certainly have split out the details and and brought the details um, forward. It, it was more in, in in the overview of what you felt, uh, you know, um, that uh, this body should. Uh, be looking into and I know that this kind of dovetails in with what we are I um, think needing to do which is to set some long-term strategic goals for this uh, body and some medium term and short term and within that uh, those changes that are you know coming down the road that uh, um, I know that you know you would like to expand and I'm kind of wanting to go the opposite direction and you know just do the utility uh, um, so I, I think that ties into all this as well but what so other I, information I know you want more discussion on this is it really the detail or did you want to discuss those things at this point in time as well I didn't open up the rescission of the other ordinances I, I, I understand that that was passed by this board I'm not revisiting that I continue to be in opposition of that of that action but mm -hmm. I'm just one one commission member um, but this is a, 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 a new item we have public comment in which they've indicated some concern that there there may be some liability for both the county and the city and I'm listening to that and I don't see a, a reason to move forward uh, prematurely on this and uh, I I don't think if we move on the if, if we were to take it to our respective bodies the old ordinance I could not at all recommend passage of that because we know that this is a much improved ordinance that's, that's been written here. So all I'm asking is, is for more clarification relative to the legal implications of, of dropping the, that part of our ordinances. Well, and as long as we understand we're re reintroducing 2014-02 because it has passed already, but I would ask if we're going to compare it to, uh, to 341 if you can specifically look that if it requires a local ordinance as part of that law because if it does not then it's it's there's no point in having this ordinance the way it was so. yeah and it's again a red herring at that point well we'll just bring it up for discussion next time yeah. but I know that uh, the enforcement um, arm of the 341 I, we've, we've gone over this before in the task force and it just wasn't there all right so we're gonna bring this back at the next uh, meeting April 8th and we'll re-reintroduce 2014-02 uh, 
uh, pending th uh, clarification of 341, AB 341, and then we'll discuss it again but, at, that, at that time. Yes, let, let me just say that no, no time will really be lost from the city's perspective because the first we could deal with these ordinances is going to be April 21st anyway. We have a special meeting on the 7th with the fire district, and so we're not putting anything else on that agenda. So uh, the timing will still be okay for us to get it on the 21st of April. April 21st? Mm -hmm. uh, hold on a second, Elizabeth. Hold on a second. Uh, Commissioner Gastineau, do you have anything, uh, any clarification you need? Okay. All right. Uh, Elizabeth, we've already had public comment on it, and you've spoken on it. So, okay. Ho hold on a second. No, right now, not from that point. I want to make sure all of the uh, commissioners have... Uh, clarity on on what we're what we're doing and, and what we're ha what we're planning to do at the April 8th meeting so we're, we're clear on that mm -hmm. okay uh, now it's a regular but we're having a regular kind of a meeting today to bring up public comments again but I'll do it and make the exception go ahead Elizabeth come on up here identify yourself and um, ask and I'll, I'll, I'll reintroduce your public comments one more time Elizabeth Henry County uh, re <coughs> resident. I didn't mean to as really comments. I have a question. I just want to be clear in my mind what the status is. So uh, ordinances pa introduced here, passed here, are not really in effect until both city and county pass them at their level. Th that is so correct. So passing them here is the first step. But mm -hmm. to finalize and actually put it into ordinance or law they have to go to both bodies okay that is so it re really nowhere have changed anything in the old ordinance at this point it's status quo as far as as what was before nothing's really changed until those actions are taken your that, statements are 100% okay correct. I just want to be clear in my mind okay thank you um, yes okay so we'll Mr. Yeah. Joel go ahead Joel. Commissioner Joel, is there? Uh, Joel come up public comments Mr. Wallen, please identify yourself. Yeah, Joe Wallen, General Manager, Hamburg WSG. I just uh, hope I'm not confusing the issue and, and uh, just wanted to throw out there that flow control is a waste industry term that is uh, generally um, has to do with directing flow of trash to a particular facility. Um, the AB 341, um, that bill, you know, it's got its things that uh, we need to focus on, but that could be introduced in a complete uh, different ordinance at a later time. Okay. That's what I thought. Thank you, Mr. Wallen. Okay, so we'll uh, move on from there, and that is 7.5. Uh, 7.6, discussion, possible action regarding nominations for 2014 Green Ribbon Awards. Ted? Yes, uh, this is something that the uh, Authority Board has done many times in the past, most recently back in uh, 2011. Uh, but it's an opportunity to recognize the various parties that make recycling and waste reduction work in our county because, of course, it's a collective effort. And so this is a, intended as a discussion draft. And absolutely, if there are entities that the board wishes to recognize to be added to this list, I would very much welcome those suggestions. But uh, as our initial list, what we have is uh, recommendations to award Green Ribbon Awards to, for Outstanding Reuse and Repair Service to the Del Norte Child Care Council for their toy lending library, uh, to the Take a Bite Out of Blight program for that, their outstanding community cleanup efforts, uh, the most organics donated in 2013, uh, very much gratitude to Hambro WSG who donated a bunch of their dirty finds for use out at the landfill. Outstanding Education Service or Program. Uh, Lori Poole recommended that we uh, recognize the tremendous efforts of Deborah Kravitz from the Del Norte County School District in establishing their uh, fairly comprehensive recycling programs. Most tons recycled in 2013 would once again go to our favorite local recycler, Jordan Keckry at Julinda Recycling, who processes all of the recyclable materials here in Del Norte County. Outstanding product take back to Crescent Ace Hardware, who uh, as a retail take back is, uh, re continues to be our most popular uh, household battery recycling location. And we do have one of the most convenient battery recycling programs in the nation here in Del Norte County. Uh, you can recycle all household batteries at a couple dozen locations, pretty much anywhere you buy household batteries here in the county. But Crescent Ace Hardware has been doing an outstanding job on that. We'd also like to recommend award of the Outstanding Producer Responsibility Program to Hambro WSG, who, to be fair, 
recycles more batteries than anybody else, but they're not a retail program. So I, I, I need to both acknowledge Attaboy's, but also you're not a retail take back, so there's a slight difference there. But outstanding product take back program with the new paint care program, dramatically expanding the numbers and types of paints that we take every day at the Del Norte County Transfer Station for no charge to the customer. And outstanding business effort to improve the environment, uh, recommend that we give that to Organic Essence, which is a wonderful local company that produces organic cosmetic products. And I'm not sure if you all remember, but uh, a few years back there was uh, sadly a uh, baby sperm whale who uh, expired on the Crescent Beach. And when the forensics uh, did an autopsy of that sperm whale, they found out that it essentially died because it had eaten too many plastics which of course are undigestible. And the, or, the people who run Organic Essence went out to the beach that day, and at the time they were packaging their materials in plastics, and they thought, oh my goodness, we're part of this problem. And so they used that as the impetus to completely change their packaging, and just a wonderful example to us all, and certainly worth recognition. So if there's any other uh, uh, suggestions, I would absolutely welcome those, but also uh, we are hoping uh, if the board uh, agrees and approves, that we would be giving these Green Ribbon Awards out as part of the Youth and Family Fair on April 26th. And so that's part of the reason why we want to bring this forward now, but uh, the board might also want to designate who would appear and give out those awards. Move to approve. Okay, move to approve. Do we have a second on um, action regarding nominations for 2014 Green Ribbon Awards? Second. Second by... Commissioner Wilson, a uh, motion by Commissioner Sullivan. Public comments? I'm sorry, I know, I know this is going on and on and on from Patricia Black City and their poor county. I just think this is wonderful and I just think this is fantastic and this is a great thing for the board to do. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Any other co public comments? Okay, bring it back to the board. Any additional discussion? on um, Green Tree Green Ribbon Awards. Can any of this be tied into any ongoing uh, um, um, advertising that you might be able to take a photograph of each of the winners and possibly, um, you know, uh, tie it into any newspaper advertising that might be going out and just a little bit more public acknowledgement other than here today and at the fair, if maybe um, you could uh, um, um, you know, I don't know, there's not quite 12 here, but you could uh, add that in to something else that's going on that might be the bottom, you know, inch or something of, a, of an ad. I think that's an excellent suggestion, and I'll look into ways that we might be able to do that. Is there money available on some well, of the you can use this? Uh, it, I mean, it seems... It's a more complicated discussion, but there, uh, the monies that we have available for advertisement primarily are associated with beverage containers and use motor oil recycling. And so um, to the extent that they directly tie in with either of those activities, then it might be justified to add expense. But otherwise, it's, we have to find another. How about putting response. something out there at the transfer station like each month, maybe a, a nice big color photo, and then maybe a, um, when people are driving in and out, you know, some board there that would, uh, um, the people that are there, you know, waiting for their number, waiting to pay, they would be able to read um, about that. So that would just be a little bit more um, public acknowledgement, maybe advertisement, uh, so that uh, maybe people will go visit some of these businesses a little bit more because they're doing the things that they like to see happen. So, you know, some type of a not a, not a, you know, plastic, um, I'm envisioning something that's maybe 11 by 18 with a nice friendly color photograph and then just the small description that's here and then, you know, support these, um, um, you know, we support these people in our community and maybe you can too or something. Excellent suggestions. I'll, I'll uh, do what I can to implement those. I don't know about something else, but... Commissioners, any additional comments? At the office, too. I, I have a couple of questions. So are there any costs associated with this, Ted? Uh, staff time, but no significant costs. We, uh, print, we generate these green awards and print them ourselves. We okay. would take the photographs ourselves and produce those other things ourselves. So it's staff time. So it looks like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven categories. Community cleanup effort, most organics donated, 2013. 
Outstanding Education Service or Program, Most Tons Recycled 2013, Outstanding Product Take Back, and Outstanding Producer Responsibility Program, and the Outstanding Business Effort to Improve the Environment. Those are our, our categories. Uh, any commissioners wish to add a category at this time, other than the ones that are noted here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven categories? Okay. Well, maybe we can think about it okay. since if. You All right, this is an ongoing discussion. And maybe some of the uh, public uh, might be able to come up with something that they would like to see. And if you would like, I'd be happy to try to include this on the next agenda. And if there's any additional suggestions, I'd be welcome. Those okay. would be welcome. So, commissioners, you're uh, free to uh, uh, weigh in on this uh, in future meetings. If you want to add a category, let, let us know. Yeah, I don't it, know if it needs to be on the agenda, but we can yeah. call you. Yeah. Well, because this is an official action of the board, um, and if the board really wants to acknowledge somebody else's effort, I actually, it would be appropriate to be on the agenda for board action. Oh, well, then we should just go with it as is. Okay, point. then we, uh, we have a motion, we have a second. Wilma, let's call a vote. Yes. 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 Okay, 7.7 .7 discussion, possible action regarding setting a special meeting of the Del Norte Solid Waste Management Authority for 3 p.m. on either March 25th, we have a typo there, it should be March 26th, not 16, or March 27, 2014, to discuss the draft budget for the year 1415. And I would like to uh, include in the, in the motion, if someone will so entertain that, uh, for follow-up discussion on R3 as we have discussed and put that as part of that this special meeting. What day of the week is that? Well, it looks like the 25th is a Tuesday, the 26th is a Wednesday, and the 27th is Thursday, and it is a 3.30 or a time convenient for all members, uh, commissioners to attend. Wednesday is good. I'm heading out of town on the 26th, so if it's another day, that'd be it. Well, of course, not the 27th, but. It's the 25th, I can, mm -hmm. I can be there. And 25th is Board of Supervisors Day, which I'm sure, um, I'm, my, my concern is that we have uh, the amended R3 report, which is en route to us. I'm, I'm concerned that every day matters. So we'll have to make sure that that gets to us in a timely manner. So your, your, your flexibility, Commissioner Gastineau, is only for the 25th? Yeah, because I'll what? be what, when is the next phase? Is it March, April 8th? Is that the next April 8th. schedule? Uh, it's the second Wednesday of March, I think. <coughs> it's April. Is there any reason we can't do these things on April 8th? Well, uh, I'm going to defer to you, uh, Director uh, Ted Ward, on this because it's uh, you've asked for a standalone meeting on this uh, the, rather the, than doing the, it on the, on the 8th. The, the JPA agreement uh, specifically says that the budget is to be brought forth in March or April. Um, so I, I think April would probably be acceptable under the JPA agreement and in all honesty the combination of trying to do the budget and uh, comment on the R3 report at the same meeting will be challenging. Uh, but the budget will be heard multiple times uh, and so there will be many uh, opportunities for discussion and guidance with regards to the development of the budget. Um, my, my original intent uh, because we were facing this March or April thing was that uh, I thought the discussion today would largely center around the R3 report just in anticipation and so it seemed challenging to try to do a budget the same meeting and so I asked that these be separated so that we could deal with the R3 report and then have a draft budget um, as it is evolving it appears that we still are having the budget and the R3 report potentially discussed at the same meeting and Again, that's just challenging. That's the way it is. Is there a way to do like a, you know, a subcommittee? Because I know like the Harbor District, they have a subcommittee of people that go look at the budget and, you know, then kind of bring stuff back as, uh, um, uh, just to go through all the detail and, and uh, um, look to see, you know, the, the different changes. And is there, is there a way for our, this body to do that? Because I'd be willing to sit on a subcommittee. <coughs> We're kind of mixing this issue up a little bit. So. What's that? Uh, interesting Good. suggestion. Uh, yeah. The city does that too, right? We have a finance You're talking committee. about a workshop? Yeah. But yeah uh, mm -hmm. Well, not a workshop, but just... Uh, no, it's a finance, a finance, finance committee. committee, and they'd still bring back a draft budget to the meeting, but it'd be helping Ted in the process put the, the budget together. 
I'm not opposed to that. I'm, uh, okay, I, do you have uh, a suggestion for time and, and dates on this? To do this well, during if, the month of March? Um, let's see. So if, if people did not want to meet on the uh, 25th, I am available to meet. I'm not available last week in March. Oh, you're not available? I'm, I'm, I, I'm not going to have, actually, I'm not going to volunteer to be on that committee, the finance committee, um, just for time constraints. So. Okay. I, I'm just I'm just wondering if it would really be beneficial for us all to sit through a special workshop on the budget. I think it would be for me, and the public may be interested in that too, since much of what we do is uh, you know associated with, with our money management. Uh, but I know finding a time is hard. I, I know that 25th and 26th, I have a board meeting at 3:15 and a different board on the 26th. And then at 5 o'clock on, on Tuesday, the 25th, we, most of us, will be attending the Law Enforcement Awards at uh, the Cultural Center. That's what I have penciled in. So we couldn't go over, and, and you have a board meeting that ends at... Where did you get notice of that? I, I, they just called me. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> um, so anyway, that, that's This is happening. at the Cultural Center. You're I, talking about the leading I, awards? I, yeah. Yes. So it mm -hmm. sounds like that week of March is out, and you're also saying you want to do the whole, everybody to sit through it. So, well, you know, we could just do a really long meeting, order pizza. Or we do a workshop. On the 8th? April on it. I mean, it's got to be done in April sometime. It doesn't say. I know we're mixing, we're mixing up a lot of subjects here, but uh, we, we have the R3 consultants who are going through quite a bit of hoops to, to get us a report, a revised report. And I'm now wondering if our, our, our board um, is now looking to not have that in our hands, to have it to the public's hands as soon as possible. So I'm still looking for a date to put that on a, on a standalone meeting. And uh, the week of March 25th, 26th, 27th worked for us. Um, I want to see those revisions. I'd like to, and I'd like it to be before the public's eyes. Um, it's already in motion. So. Commissioners, how do you feel about having a meeting in March uh, on this uh, standalone item? Well, it sounds like the 25th then would be the only day, and uh, Commissioner um, uh, Sullivan wouldn't be able to be there. But right. I'd we'll, only be at the board it, meeting that day. And maybe four other people will uh, um, be able to do the budget. He's, he's pretty good with numbers. He can catch up. Mm -hmm. Did R3 have an issue with, with doing this on the 8th of April? No, we, they, they, it didn't come to that. They, they promised, uh, in my conversation with Mr. Schoen um, last couple of days, including this morning, is he promised he would have these uh, revisions uh, per uh, the acting director's request, not the board's request, but the acting director's request, he'd have them within 10 days. So he's halfway through this process. Um, what about... I, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this before the, uh, what's after the 27th, so the 31st is a Monday. Um, uh, and, uh, I, we would have to consult with um, the, the Tony regarding the schedule. I did, I was directed to explore the last week in March, and so I asked about the availability, and mm -hmm. I was told it was available at 3.30 for those three days. I did not inquire regarding the following weeks. Well, let, let's find a day that all the commissioners can be available. So, Commissioner Gassino, when are you, uh, what's your trip schedule? When are you back? Well, if you also know that that's the uh, tsunami walkout uh, countywide um, drill and on the 26th, right. And so I'm, I'm going to do that. I have uh, integral roles in that. And then I was planning on heading out of town at 1 o'clock um, on the 26th. 25th, of course, we have the lead-in uh, awards at 5 for our law enforcement. And then after that, I won't be back until uh, the next Monday. But then there's a lot of work still to do for the tsunami thing, <laughs> tsunami safe week. And I'm really busy with that <clears throat> leading up you know, the, the weekend of the 22nd. So uh, the rest of my March is pretty packed. So we may be just backed into it, but is this board in consensus that it wants to have a standalone meeting on the R3 report? Um, is it, do we have a consensus here? 
Yes. <clears throat> okay, that you want to have a standalone meeting. It's just going to be the draft report, though, correct? That's correct. And if that's the case, we need to find a date, and now's the time to do it, to have this. And then as far as um, uh, Ted's uh, budget report, uh, where are we doing this? You, we, you know, again, uh, if that's the direction of the board. Okay. So if we have the April 8th meeting at the direction of this board to have our budget meeting, what day in April, in April do you wish to exercise the standalone meeting for R3? I'd like everybody to look at their calendars and give me their feedback on this and so that we can have a date and time and again subject to availability. If you would like, we could include an agenda item on the April 8th meeting to try to set that special meeting to discuss the R3 draft. Um, as an option. The other option, because it probably would work in terms of the timing that you've discussed, would be to have both the R3 and the budget both on the April meeting, though I would anticipate that well, might be a yes, long we, meeting. If we, if we wait till April the 8th, and that's going to be a very long meeting. If we have other issues to discuss, including the budget, including the R3 report, I'm fine with that if that's, if that's the consensus of this board. Um, could We've got a lot of people doing a lot of work to get these revisions out to us as soon as possible. And I thought in the public's interest they'd want to see these revisions as soon as possible and discuss them. Mm -hmm. and, I, and we can't seem to find a, a, a meeting of the minds to get everybody here together at one time during the month of March. April 1st, 2nd, or 3rd? Yep. So April 1st is a, uh, two, is, is a Tuesday? I can do it on any of those days. Yeah. Is that a yes, uh, April 1st? It's a Tuesday. April 1st, 2nd, or 3rd is fine with me. Okay. April 9th. So it's Tuesday the 2nd, uh, Tuesday the 1st, and then, boy, how appropriate. Okay. Uh, how are the uh, other uh, Wilma commissioners with regard to? call Tony and check availability, please? Well, let, let's, let's go on the basis of, let's get a day. That's in the afternoon. Yeah, so you have, you have to be wound up. They start before this time. And they start at what time, Wilma? Uh, closed session, depends on closed session. The open session starts at, usually at 6 or 6.30. So they would be able to open, the open the meeting to go into closed session. So if we schedule a Tuesday, April 1st meeting at 3.30, pending availability. You know. Roger, I, I'm, I doubt if it's already called for, the wastewater treatment facility room is probably available. And that, that's not a bad size for a workshop. Okay, we're, we're, so, you're, we're talking about R3 right now, the R3. Okay, but I mean, we're, we're, we're trying to work around a room. I'm mm -hmm. saying that we have a room that we can use. Wastewater treatment for solid waste. Okay. About solid waste. Perfect. Lots of, <laughs> lots of poetry in this. Uh, in this effort to uh, get these matters discussed in a timely way. All right, can we agree that Tuesday, April 1st, at a time convenient to all members of all commissioners, is acceptable to everybody mm -hmm. for the uh, R3 report, either at the Flynn Center or per uh, Commissioner Holly's uh, suggestion at the wastewater treatment? My concern is that we have public accommodation at this meeting, and I know that wastewater treatment room is not terribly big. Um, I'm not oh, sure how much I think it's size be big enough for that. Um, I, I would have maybe, you know. You know, it's sometimes we've got 75 seats here in this room. If we make everyone uncomfortable. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah. It, it, we, we've, we've had as many as, as 30 or 40 people. Well, it's 3 o'clock here and, and uh, yeah. I think it will be open at that time. So All right. 3 o'clock on the 1st. And Commissioner Wilson, are you all right with 3 p.m. on Tuesday the 1st? I, I think I am. I, I don't have my calendar in front of me, but I'm in town, so should I'll, be. Okay. I'll write you a note. All right. Now, okay. I see this is possible action, so um, do we need a motion on this to make this meeting uh, in a second? I think Chair has got discretion. All right. So that's what we'll do. The action will be for Tuesday, April 1st, 3 p.m. At, at the Flynn Center pending availability, and and that will be to have the discussion of R3 and the R3 draft report and I'll indicate that as draft report and 
we will have our budget meeting at the regularly scheduled April 8th meeting. So M might I suggest that, that we, we request that Ted keep the items for that evening way down so that we can just concentrate on. Well, budget. I think that's incumbent. Ted, I, uh, you know, I, I just, we wouldn't have any expectations. I don't think a, a long, a long well, agenda. Special meeting. No, I'm talking the about budget. the, we have the regular meeting on the eighth. And if we're dedicating that to the budget, we, we really want to just tackle the budget. What I, yeah, and what I'd like to do is, again, I've completed the 10-year uh, analysis, uh, um, gone back through all of the year-end audited figures uh, for the authority, and I would like to, hopefully before that time, um, it's, but it, I'm right in the middle of the tax season uh, for Mr. Taylor, so it makes it difficult, uh, his time is so short, just to have someone double-check uh, all those figures, and then um, um, I'd like to see, again, uh, when I personally do a budget for myself, I don't just look at one year, I kind of take a look at the trend and kind of see what's happening. So when, um, for that meeting, preparation for that meeting, I'm, I'm hoping that I will have my um, analysis double-checked by uh, um, uh, um, someone else that uh, uh, with a uh, some a little bit more authority maybe and then um, as well get some background um, figures from some other years so we can make some good calls on what uh, an upcoming year might look like well and then from that what we might want to do is set up some strategic is have a strategic planning session or workshop for the board at that point because that's that been brought up in commissioner the Sullivan are you talking about at the Tuesday April no, I'm meeting. talking about setting a future date to okay. sit down sometime in April or May. Yeah, there's a lot on the yeah. there's a lot on the calendar, a lot on the plate. Uh, and that being the case, uh, I would like to add to the Tuesday, April 1st, 3 p.m. R3 draft meeting to uh, reinsert items 7.3 and 7.4 um, once we have the draft in hand. So that will be at the Tuesday, April 1st, 3 p.m. meeting. Uh, at the okay. at this center. Okay, okay. Are, are just we for good a, on just, this? Just for a clarification for me, I mean, we're meeting here today, Wednesday, and then we're meeting Tuesday of April. April 1st, yep. But and also and Tuesday, April 8th. Sure, we are. No, we Wednesday, day. April okay. 9th. <laughs> Different Wednesday, subjects, April 9th. Uh, Commissioner Gass. I, I just want to know no, no, no. when our meetings are. Okay. Our regular <laughs> meetings <laughs> are the adopted the bylaws are, it's the second Wednesday of each month unless that Wednesday falls on a holiday, and then it would be the second Tuesday, the Tuesday before that. What's, what's the night? Oh. Uh, but uh, in this case, the April 1st it's, meeting is it's April a special 9th. meeting. Okay, it's right. April 9th. Let's go regular right. meeting is April 9th. We're having a special meeting as just discussed right. on April 1st. Okay. I, I know we because we, we don't have calendars right in front of us. April 1st is a Tuesday, and that's when we're asking for this meeting. Yes. April 2nd is a Wednesday, and seven days after that is April 9th, which is our regularly scheduled okay. meeting where we will be discussing the budget. April yes. 9th. April 9th. Okay, not April 8th. Okay. So I'm, my, my, my apologies for the clarification. Uh, now, we still are planning a special meeting on Tuesday, April 2nd. At April 1st. April, April 1st. Okay, let me circle it. April 1st. At 3 p.m. on R3, which will include discussion on the draft and reinsert items 7.3 and 7.4. Okay. Is everybody clear on that? I think I am too. Okay. Come up to the. Um, why not, uh, Elizabeth? Everything else we've been doing Elizabeth today. Elizabeth Henry uh, County. I just wanted to know: Will the draft be available to the public? The draft that's going to be discussed at the April 1st meeting so that we have something to bring do, do you are the you answer to that is yes okay. it will be once it's reviewed by, by um you myself and and uh, commissioner okay. holly who also goes in pre-agenda and then once we have looked at this member of the city member of the county yeah. then we'll authorize ted to put it on there and 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 move for there so yes that's our intention is to have okay. that draft Put it, on the website. Would it be on uh, a Friday, like it usually agenda items, or you don't know? I, I can't answer that okay. at this time because I don't have the report in front of me. I'm told I will have the report no later 
then the 24th of March, the revised report. Now, that was the purpose of having the meeting forthwith. Yeah. Once we have it, we look at it, we post it, it goes on. But we don't have everybody here available to meet okay. on the yeah. Wednesday, which is the 26th. That, so that I brings understand. up a, another point, which is very good. We received the report on a Wednesday, and I had gotten an email that it had come in, but I know that the board didn't receive it until the following Monday. I had received it... Uh, uh, um, so there was a five-day delay from when the time this draft came in to the time that the board received that. So when this next draft comes in, um, I think it needs to immediately be forwarded to the board members. Okay. And we'll be following up on that and, uh, very judiciously. We'll make sure, and I'll be in touch with Mr. Schoen, as to when that report is sent. We'll get a copy of it in the email. And once it's received, I'll acknowledge that uh, Ted has it, and then hopefully, uh, Commissioner Holly, you'll be available to join me in reviewing that draft and forthwith putting it on the website after it's, uh, it's viewed with the appropriate narrative and analysis associated with it. Okay. If I so, can say something, um, Mary, there was, we had a technical issue with getting, but Roger had, Roger and I had a discussion that Friday about how we we're going to get the report to the remaining commissioners, and I had offered to, because you can't, he can't communicate with four other board members, he was going to send it to me, and I was going to forward it to everybody, but there was an issue with the amount of data that my email server was allowing me to get, and I think for that reason, um, it didn't get, it didn't get distributed till Monday, so it, it was the intent of the chair to get that out on the Friday before so unfortunately that didn't happen and I was out of town on a, an approved vacation at that time so as soon as I returned on Monday I sent it out all right I've marked my calendar to uh, call you m Monday March 24th uh, Ted to make sure the report is in hand and I'll be in touch with the R3 consulting group to yeah, make I ha sure. have them um, send you an email and as well, because they sent and, me an email right. when they now, sent again, out as, the report, as, uh, as well as the report. As uh, Council Rice is bringing to the attention, I, as a sitting member, I cannot take that report and forward it to all of you. I can only forward it to one of you, and that's basically where it stops, because you cannot have a serial violation of the Brown Act. So I'm go going to ask uh, Council yeah. Rice to figure out how to distribute this report uh, on a, your computer system, which is apparently not taking. Uh, well, there's bulk. nothing there's prohibiting no. Ted from okay. from forwarding the report to the full okay. board. You'll get it in immediately. The time anyway. Immediately. Yeah. So yes, it can come in and immediately be forwarded. Yes. 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 Okay. okay. Now uh, that I believe covers all sections uh, that we've covered everything on the agenda, with the exception of we do have a closed session following this meeting. So. Unless there are additional comments or questions or clarifications, I know it's been a little bit of a confusing meeting. The circumstances are a bit unusual also. I'll adjourn this meeting. And thanks for coming, boy. We all missed a beautiful afternoon out there. I am telling you. The board will go into closed session. <laughs>